Show you how to use Adobe Illustrator to create a modular font. So what exactly is a modular font? Basically it's just a typeface created using a few simple shapes. For my font I'm going to start with a lowercase o and a lowercase l because I can get pretty much any shape I need out of those two basic characters. I recommend using a template like this. It's got all the basic characters, a few common ligatures, and some special characters. The font software I use, Bird Font, has a default height of 72 pixels, so I made some guides for my baseline, a senders, D senders, X height, and cap height. That way, when I import my characters into bird font, they're already at the height I want. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the grid, and it's a good idea to check your preferences to make sure that it's showing a new grid line every 72 pixels. Starting with the O, I'm thinking of kind of a sci-fi font, so I'm going to make a rounded rectangle. I'll use my grid to get the right width and height, and there's my O. Now I'll make my lowercase l, so here's a rectangle that's 8 pixels wide and 72 pixels tall, and now I have an l. These are pretty much all the building blocks for my font, and this is what I mean by a modular font. So if I want to make an n, I can just take the o, cut off the bottom half, and drag the legs down at the baseline, and there's an n. I can drag this over the h slot, resize this rectangle, and now I have an h. You'll probably have to make some adjustments for certain characters, but this is pretty much the entire font. As I continue to make characters, I'm just reusing and modifying pieces from the characters I've already made. It looks like I've finished with my basic characters, and now I'm ready to put this into bird font. There are a lot of font creation tools out there. Most of the good ones cost money, so I recommend using bird font because it's free and it's easy to use. I'll copy the A, open bird font, create a new font, Double click on the A in the overview. Now I can just paste the shape into the artboard. To align it, I'll right click on the X, type in zero, then right click on the Y and type in zero. On each side of the character are the left and right margins. This determines how much space there will be between each character. I'll right click on the guides and pick four for the left and four for the right. You need to set this for every glyph. If you press Control K, you can also set kerning for spaces between particular characters. You can save an export using the hamburger in the top right of the window. You'll probably want to change your export settings from the default, so do that before you export. Now you can install the font, test it in your favorite program, make any adjustments, and that's it.